What the fuck is up, motherfuckers? Hello, hello. Testing, testing, one, two, three. All right, what's going on? So for uh, the mud, the water, the air, and the blood, the track list is 16 tracks. The first one is the mud, the water, the air, the blood. The second one is Garden of Evil. The third one is My Head is Haunted. The fourth one is Death in a Jar. The fifth one is The Mud. The sixth one is Debbie in the Dark. The seventh, Morbid. Eight, My Kind of Party. Nine, Price of Life. Ten, The Water. Eleven, Villainous featuring ABK. Twelve, 45 Minutes. Thirteen, Coagulate. Fourteen, The Blood. Fifteen, The Drought. And sixteen, Let It Rain. On track 14, you meant to say the air. What'd I say? You said the blood. Oh, yeah. Well, I meant air. It's funny that you say the blood because there is no track called the blood. And it makes me want to speculate whether or not that last track, Let It Rain, is a reference to blood, as in Let It Rain Blood. Or a reference to Black Rain. True. One thing that I was thinking would be cool is obviously we don't uh, we don't want the lyrics or nothing, but I think what would be cool is if they let out maybe 16 days before the album came out in order uh, the instrumentals of each song. Of course, take out all the lyrics. We don't want to hear the lyrics, but I think that would be pretty cool. I just I want to hear the. I want to hear the beats. I want to hear something that is on the level of uh, headache. I've been looking for that next infamous beat, Dark Lotus beat. I hear you, man. Without a doubt, the track titles alone are curious to me, and they look fun. Death in a Jar, Price of Life, Coagulate, Garden of Evil. It makes me wonder if Debbie in the Dark is, you know, a fuck track. Uh, My Kind of Party. It makes me wonder if it's going to be another type of, like, We Danced, like, Supernatural, uh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sex with Zombie Chicks type song. I'm just guessing, throwing out guesses. Who knows what 45 minutes could accomplish. <laughs> Coagulate is most undoubtedly a blood song, so maybe, you know, I mean, it just seems like the mud, the water, the air, and then you throw blood into the mix as if that is a component of the growth of a lotus. Yeah, man, this whole album has my curiosity peaked. I mean, it's definitely, some of the, some of the uh, titles stand out, like My Head is Haunted, to me, that kind of stood out. Morbid, Coagulate, those are the tracks that kind of stand out to me. All right, so we've managed to pretty much go all around the world with this topic and avoid the elephant in the room, which is quite villainous of us, uh, if you catch my joke. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> why don't you, uh, what, what do you, <laughs> what's the big deal? I have no idea what we're talking about. <laughs> I'll just say it. Dark Lotus is a group compiled of ICP, Twisted, Blaze Dead Homie. ABK is a former member of Dark Lotus, and he is featured on one of these songs. Uh, big ups to Fago lovers for posting this track list. You know, this is a treat. We still have, like, a, what, a month to go before this album drops. We got the album cover a couple of days ago, and the different packages, right, the different pre-sale packs were made available this week. You know, all of a sudden, we're looking at a full track list. So, you know, big ups to, to Fago lovers for, uh, for dropping that freshness. But... At the bottom of the track list, it says, as you can see, this is the first Dark Lotus album with a guest appearance. 
And then it says, by the way, by a former Dark Lotus member. I wonder why he's not officially in the group again. What? Who? What? Who posted this? Nobody fresh. No hate, but are oh, you, hate. you, dude? What the fuck is going on here? You wonder why he's not officially in the group again? You must be just playing coy for the sake of you know Fago lovers, and you don't want to be biased. Today, Junior. <laughs> Look. ABK used to be in Dark Lotus, yes, but he wasn't an original member of Dark Lotus. And anybody will tell you that Dark Lotus is one of those groups that came out, it seemed, at the pinnacle of years of momentum, grinding, dropping Joker's cards, signing Twisted, and they promoted Dark Lotus heavily as a very mysterious supergroup. And when that shit dropped, it just exploded. It became, like, a lot of ninjas' most favorite band ever of all time. It's like Cannibal Corpse is to Atticus the Death Meddler. That's what Dark Lotus means to us, you know what I'm saying? And that original Dark Lotus, when it dropped, featured Mars as a sixth member. And... Old school juggalos are well aware the reason why ABK is not an official member of Dark Lotus today. So without drudging up opening old wounds after Mars leaving and ABK coming and filling his role and then leaving Psychopathic, thus abandoning Dark Lotus at the time, Violent J said that there was only going to be five petals of the Lotus and they were never going to fill that cursed sixth pedal ever again. And after he said that, they came out with Opaque Brotherhood, which, in my opinion, was incredibly fucking wise decision to keep it just Twisted Blaze and ICP. Now, today, Twisted is left psychopathic. You know, shockwaves have been sent across the underground, and when the dust is settled, we're still getting a Dark Lotus album. And I just find it humorous and slightly annoying that this dude, Nobody Fresh, is saying, I wonder why he's not officially in the group again. Well, because motherfuckers are sick and tired of members entering and leaving their favorite groups. Although a lot of groups do it. Like Cottonmouth Kings is fucking a rotating door right now. But Dark Lotus, it means a lot to a lot of people. And motherfuckers are sick and tired of seeing motherfuckers joining the group and then leaving and then coming back. So even though the whole dynamic has changed now because Twisted and Blaze are not on Psychopathic, and I almost feel like they're sneaking ABK in on one track just to feel how the reception is going to be. Because quite frankly, I bet they want to include him in the group again. And I'm sure a great number of Juggalos would like to see ABK in Dark Lotus again, but... There is also a great number of juggalos, old school juggalos, that I can almost guarantee you are not fucking psyched about ABK being in Lotus. And I almost feel like this is where Psychopathic is working their magic. And they're just kind of maybe inching him back in, you know, one track, maybe a performance at the gathering where they do this song and a couple of tracks off of Black Rain, right? They close with the gold cross version, like they always do. Until eternity, the ABK version of that song. So I love the original Mars version. I'm an old school juggalo. I have both CDs. And to me, the revised version of Tales from the Lotus Pod sounds like they literally cut and pasted and like patchworked ABK into Mars's spots. And you can even hear some of Mars's background vocals behind ABK on some of the songs. <laughs> Fucking serious. You think I'm kidding? Go listen to this shit. Compare them. I know this is probably going to make people mad, but to me, I mean, as small of a thing as it is, because you know it is like a small thing, but that really just draws a line between new and old juggalos. It's certainly not wrong to talk about 
the history that psychopathic has been through. You know, I'm not I'm not hating on ABK for being on this album at all, but I am definitely not upset that he's not an official member again. If anything, I really enjoyed the Opaque Brotherhood. I thought that it was an ideal lineup. Not necessarily saying that it was the best one, but I think it holds its own and it stands up to its predecessors. And it also, in the time frame that it came out, where people were fucking pissing and moaning about how ICP isn't as wicked anymore, they drop the Opaque Brotherhood. And it is so sick. And it is so wicked. And I feel like nobody wants to come out and, you know, mea culpa, when really they're just fucking blowing off steam. I can't, I can't take anyone seriously if they're attacking uh, groups. You know, even, even motherfuckers that waste their time like in the Juggalo click, they're wasting their time attacking, I don't know, whatever they consider whack, mainstream or, you know, different styles of rap, probably mainstream, or different genres of music, probably mainstream. It almost feels like no one's even original with their hate anymore. Just <laughs> Me, personally, I, I don't think I would mind ABK being in Dark Lotus. This reminds me a lot of other times when psychopathic have made promises to the juggalos and they try to honor their promises. A lot of people are watching them like a hawk and ready to call them out when they do drop the ball. And this feels like a curveball. It feels like they're saying to us, look, we're going to keep our word and keep it five petals of the Lotus, but we're going to feature this previous member of dark Lotus on one song who knows? Maybe it's a fucking banger. And maybe at the gathering, Violent J pulls one of these. What do you guys think of ABK joining the Lotus again? What do you think, y'all? Reverse the curse. <laughs> and if, if the gathering just responds in an overwhelmingly positive way to that, I'd just be glad that they're actually planning another Dark Lotus record in the future. I mean, can't we just count our lucky fucking stars? If ABK wants to be a part of it, I'm fine with that. But then again, he kind of won me over with his most recent records. I thought Medicine Bag was dope. Uh, I mean, I really did lose faith in ABK for a short while, uh, starting with his departure from Psychopathic. You know, when he came back, I really wasn't impressed. I didn't think Mudface was anything to write home about. But I'm willing to give credit where it's due, and I thought Medicine Bag, his best record to date, I'll repeat myself again. I'm just happy that they're keeping it moving. It'll be interesting to see what this ABK track is all about. But other than that, I'm not really fixated too much on it. There's a good reason why he's not officially in the group, but I, I actually kind of see no reason why he can't be back in it as long as there's support from the Juggalos. Violent J did it before when they went on tour, and he said, what do you guys think about this next record being a Joker's card, and that there's actually going to be a, a second deck. And they went city to city and threw that loaded question at the crowd and got Juggalos pumped and saying, yeah, Joker's card, second deck. And they did that at every fucking city on the tour. And they probably felt there was an overwhelming positive, you know, response to that notion. I mean, let's face it, guys. They're doing pretty well. Let's just hurry up with that first deck box set. Come on. Let's go. Uh, <laughs> you know, I do see the Juggalo YouTube community probably going to pick up here pretty soon with, uh, you know, Dark Lotus and the mixtape and one of the bombs that's going to be on the mixtape. I think... We might have some action in the next couple weeks. Just try and enjoy while it lasts. <laughs> yeah, no doubt. All right. Well, thanks for watching. I'm Beastmaster. That's Panic17. We're ninjas in action on Carnival Spirits. Always remember to fuck the fuck off.